today's video is all about how to get good at PvP in Albion Online. This is a guide to teach you how to learn to get good at PvP and the steps you will need to take in order to better yourself in your PvP game. Now, I'm not going to just give you some random build to use. I'm not going to tell you where to go or what skills to use or what counters what. I'm going to teach you instead how to teach yourself how to learn these things. I know that sounds a little crazy, but I have looked far and wide and not a single person has made a guide like this ever. And so I'm going to teach you how to properly learn to get good. Before you start this journey, there's some things that I need you to do. Number one is to have lots of silver stocked away. Several million. You're going to be burning through sets. These are your training wheels, essentially. Number two is you're going to have to need to have ways to make silver stashed away, like a gathering set that you can just gather in blue and yellow zones. Because at some point, if you go hard enough, you might bankrupt yourself. So you want some items stashed away that can generate or make you silver. Also, you want to have ways to fame farm your weapons and armor to level 100 so that you at least stand a chance against other players that did the same thing, which is the majority in PvP situations these days. You almost won't encounter players that don't have specializations. Also, you need to have some kind of MOBA experience, so go play some free MOBA games like Defense of the Ancients 2 or League of Legends. Just at least get out of, uh, what, what is it, Copper League, Bronze League, I don't know what the leagues are. Just try to get to Silver at least, or Gold. I'm a Diamond 1, so, you know, I'm already there. Now, consider that skill in this game, in Albion Online, is not the major decider of who lives and dies in PvP. It helps, but a lot of it is rock, paper, scissors, a lot of it is who has higher spec, who has the better gear, who just... And then after that, skill is what matters. Skill is probably the final deciding factor in an even fight. So, the very first thing you're going to learn to do is how to study the weapon that you're wanting to play and to study people that have played it longer than you and have more experience than you. We're going to use MurderLedger.com for this. I'm going to show you exactly how to do it. So, here at the top, there is a VODs button. This is videos on demand. That's what that means. So, go ahead and click that. Then you want to change fight size to 1v1. You don't care about anything else, unless you're studying for group PvP, but that's a whole different thing. This video is strictly for solo PvP, preferably 1v1. Sometimes you might have to 1v2. Then you're going to type in or search for the weapon that you want to learn that you're interested in. So, for me, I'm going to type Bear Paw, because Bear Paws, I like Bear Paws. Uh, they're a great solo weapon. I can dismount players. I can chase them down. I really enjoy playing Bear Paws. So here's how we're going to use this website to study. On the left is the killer, and on the right is the dead person. You don't want to look at a VOD of the Bear Paws losing fights. You won't really learn much from that. You also don't want to watch IP unfair fights unless the killer is the one who has less item power. So you see this number here, 1,757 item power? That's how strong their gear is. This number here, you know, this this player is clearly outmatched by several hundred item power. They didn't stand a chance. There, there's nothing to learn here. And uh, so what you're going to do is you're going to scroll down, and you're going to find where there's a bear pause on the left side. So here we go, spear style, uh, except he killed someone weaker, so skip. All right, keep scrolling, keep scrolling. We're going to look for bear pause on the left here. And uh, sometimes it takes a bit to load. Like right now, uh, I scrolled all the way down. It had to load a bit, and now we can continue scrolling. So we're scrolling some more, and we're looking for bear paws just as the weapon on the left column here, because that's what we want to learn today, is bear paws. So here we go. We have an IP fair fight from Lu Luca Kun, uh, who killed, what is this, a uh, Infernal Scythe player, who was slightly better geared than them. Now, this, unfortunately, isn't the perfect example, but you can still watch this. You see this little Twitch icon here? When you click this, it will go to this streamer, Sagox, and uh, it will show you their point of view during this fight. So, I've, ar I've already watched these before I filmed, so I'll tell you what happened. Um, essentially, Sagox just didn't have the damage output to beat L Luke and Kun here. And um, the giant potion, or the Gigantify potion, was a real big decider of the fight. So, there's not much to learn there from that clip. And no, I, I can't exactly show uh, the... Uh, <laughs> I can't show these clips because I don't own the rights to show these. Uh, that would be fun, though. I'm not going to bother asking these people. But uh, essentially, so we scroll down again. Here here we go. This is an unfair fight. He just killed Professor Pew, uh, who was vastly undergeared. 
So keep scrolling here. So here now here's Sagox from his point of view with Bear Paws. Now, another thing about this clip is that he's using 6-4 Awakened, which really makes it unfair. And, and this was an unfair fight anyway. This guy never stood a chance. So preferably try to find one where it's not a .4 Awakened weapon. And so we're, we're scrolling, we're scrolling, we're looking, we're looking, and uh, let's see here. So here we go, GDSL. No, he killed someone under geared. So we keep scrolling. Uh, this guy, this guy's name here, he killed someone more geared. Except, again, this is from the point of view of the, of the victim. So not too much to learn here, but I'm going to watch it and give my take. All right, so there was nothing to learn from that clip because this player let his HP get real low to bait this player into killing him. And he did. So, uh, the bait failed, essentially. And that, that, there's nothing to learn there from that. So we're gonna keep scrolling. And, uh, here we go. We got, uh, we got three more Bear Paul fights here. All IP unfair, all against weaker victims. Can't use those. So you can see, depending on the weapon you choose, you, it's gonna take a while to find some really good, juicy clips, uh, to learn from. And, uh, so you're gonna continue to do that, and you're gonna watch what they do, and basically just copy what they do, in a way, and try to improve on it with your own playstyle, maybe tinker with a few items here and there. But uh, that's that's the very first step, that's studying. If you've never used the weapon, you're not proficient in it, this is how to start. So let's see, we got some more bear paw kills here. Uh, none of these, these are all weaker victims, uh, sadly, so no, no one could, you know, when it's 200 or more item power diff, there's nothing to learn from that. Uh, continue scrolling, still, again, not a lot of, uh, Bear Paw representation in the streamer community, huh? Oh, uh, here we go, 15, nope. Oh, okay, 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 so, I'm gonna want, this is a cursed staff dying to Bear Paws, that's interesting to me, I'm gonna check that out. And, I learned something that I already knew, because I've been playing a while, is as a Bear Paws player, if you see anyone with a Crypt Candle, they're squishy, especially when they have no way to immune your damage. If this player had a Cleric robe they would have won that fight but they didn't they had no defensives at all on this build and so this guy just saw a free kill and took it free literal free money so there was a little bit of a learning experience here if you don't already know the mechanics but basically this person jumped on this person and deleted their health bar before they could even get their full combo out and that just goes to show you the burst potential of bear paws so, anyway, you keep scrolling, and you keep learning, and you keep learning, and you absorb as much as you can every single, single day. The next step is putting what you learned into practice. So now it's time to begin your training, and depending on your confidence and wealth in the game, here's how you're going to do it. So the baby step version, this is the training wheels, this is the you're learning to crawl to learn to walk. You're going to do yellow zone faction warfare. These players are real bad, though. Next up. To overcome gear fear, you must get rich in the game. You have to do this, otherwise you will always be afraid of losing your stuff. Then, gank in Brazilian red zones. A lot of people don't realize this, but in, in Brazilian, which I can't show you on the map, you can leave the city, and there's it's surrounded by red zones, and new players, for whatever reason, will farm out here or do dungeons, and whales love to hang out here. So this is a great place to actually do real ganks. All right, gank weaker targets in the mists. All right, so if you see like a flat four guy and you're wearing like six three, just kill him. It's a free kill. You might as well do it. And uh, you know, all the little flat four people you try to kill that manage to get away from you, you're learning how to escape other players yourself. So learn to punch up. This is whenever you get a little bit braver. You go to PvP and Yellow Zone mists, and you want to fight people more geared than you. You, you just want to go out just. Go after them like a rabid dog, and most likely they will kill you, they will smash you into the dirt, but sometimes they're very cowardly or they're not good at the game, and so you're fighting a harder, more dangerous target. You will get more brave by doing this, you will know what you can and can't kill, and what to look out for from skilled and unskilled opponents. Then, start learning to 1v2 and 1v3 in Yellow Zone Faction Warfare. Whenever I'm in doing faction warfare, I will dismount on like five to six guys. I might kill three or four of them, and then I still manage to get away. And uh, yes, it's just yellow zone, you know, there's no risk in, in loot loss, but there is the repair bill. Uh, so finally, just go for it, all right? Fight equal or slightly stronger targets in mists. You have to hope that they're not better than you or that their build will not counter yours. You should learn this from the studying part earlier in the video. Then, attempt royal red zone ganking, which is really difficult compared to the mists, because you will be swarmed down by people who are not flagged. So, this is going to teach you how to be more mobile, and how to uh, get away when you finally kill someone, scoot up the loot, and survive, or go to, you know, 
a, a zone transition so you can get a shield and manage to escape. You're going to be hunted very, very ruthlessly in the red zones, by the way. Finally, roam the open world and fight guilds. You might find a guild of like two or three people, and depending on your build and their gear, you might be able to kill all of them or even chase all of them away from uh, open world chests. Uh, mo it's mostly gear based, but um, you know sometimes it's not. So now that you know all of the steps, that is how you get good at PvP. Why don't we give it a try? So here I am. I am not flagged up, but I am going to go out to the red zone here of Brazilian, and uh, I'm going to first check for other gankers. If other people are ganking, I'm not going to also do it. So there's two gankers. So obviously, I'm not going to run out here and do a one v two, but well, maybe I can. So here's my risk right now. I'm risking four hundred thirty-five thousand silver. And um, my gear's okay. It's more so meant for ganking and not fighting gankers. But uh, you can see there's a couple of people out here, and I can ins start inspecting people, see if there's any potential victims, and see how they play. And, uh, you know, right now I'm not flagged up. I am able to study my uh, future opponent, possibly, depending on how they move, how they play, how they react. Flag off their screen, jump them, and get some kills. Maybe. We don't know yet. I don't know. Now there's three gankers. Okay. It's getting a little serious now. So this guy is a tanky dude. I won't be able to kill him in a reliable amount of time, but I could kill him if I caught him out doing whatever it is he's technically doing out here. But uh, because there's three gankers on the map, I'm starting to lose confidence, and I don't... Here's the thing, right? Okay, I'm not really losing confidence because I'm mega rich in this game. But I'm pretending that I'm not, okay? So this set... With a tier 8 gathering set back at home in the save zones, it would take me around 30 minutes of my real life time to make. So if I die, I lose 30 minutes of my life. That's how I look at it. And I know that's not the best way to look at things, but that's how I look at it, and that's how you kind of should look at it. But if I manage to kill someone who's worth just as much as I am or more, then I just I just gained that time, essentially, right? And, and that's kind of the thrill of PvP that people enjoy. So, three gankers on the map. I'm being hyper aware right now, uh, making sure... Looks like someone's out here skinning, so that's a good sign, right? You see these dead animals and their corpses and their skeletons? We, we would love to gank a skinner, especially if they've been out here for a full hour and we managed to take their loot. That is That feels good. That's fun for us. I can, you can also check dungeons, by the way. A lot of random people, for whatever reason, outside Brazilian, will just do dungeons. I don't get it. So, to check dungeons, you just hop in... See if there's a mob alive, and there is, so there, there's no one there, alright? I don't recommend that you leave the dungeon with gankers on the other map, because you won't get a shield. So if, if gankers roll up on me, I'm 100% dead right here. So you, you learn all these tricks by, by actually doing the PvP. I'm not going to like teach you every little trick about how, if gankers are following you, how you can, you know, uh, use the bubble near the edge of the maps here to try to avoid them, or travel slightly safer than you can, and stuff like that. I'm I'm just gonna roam around and try to get some clips of some sweet kills. So that previous map had a full gank party. As soon as I was scouted by two of them, two more joined the map, making four flag players. They were all super duper geared with high crowd control, lots of immunes. There's even on one v one, it would have been a real tough fight for me to fight any of them. And so I just moved on because uh, here's the thing, right? You, when you're when you're learning how to fight, you don't want to just jump in and fight anybody that has a red name. You want to be on your mount and scout before you even begin. Also, I just want to point out, do not use Corrupted Dungeons to try to learn how to fight. Corrupted Dungeons are a weird meta game where only very specific builds work in it, and it's just a, a huge slog. It limits your item power, and it's just rock, paper, scissors, and it's it's not a good place to learn to PvP. So avoid those. So, PvP clip time. Alright, I was actually out here just clearing some dungeons, so I had the wrong W on, but I saw this guy was vastly undergeared, and his build doesn't quite exactly counter mine, so I went for it, I got him dismounted, and this is, again, not in the mist, this is outside, so his mount is full HP. I can dismount people with this build just fine. He wouldn't viz, and uh, I guess he tried to juke from behind. He's still wanting to fight, but um, I decide, you know what, I'm never gonna catch this guy if I have my current W spell on. And you learn these kind of silly things from experience. And, you know, if this is your first day, you're not going to uh, intuitively know these kinds of things. So I switch W. He's probably going to run by me to try to taunt me, which a lot of players will do. So I just dismount him again, which is pretty easy. And, um, <laughs> yeah, I just melt him after that. So I uh, dodge his, uh, his W. I accidentally poison potion into his shield, but it's fine. So I get half effective in this there. It doesn't really matter. He's dead. So that's some free loot. 
Next clip, this guy wanted to fight me. I also wanted to fight him, so I'm like, okay, let's go, pal. And uh, I can tell immediately from his gear that I win the fight. I don't have to do, like, I don't even have to throw my potion if I don't want to. But uh, you can see when I do throw the potion, look at his HP compared to mine. It's just gone. He doesn't realize just how much damage output I have. And that, again, comes from experience. I also upgraded my helmet here, so now I have a better helmet to use against other players. So while farming the mist camps, if I do come across a player that I know I can beat, I do jump them, I do dismount them. Most players won't turn and fight. They will simply just leave. And when you get dismounted, it's like a 30-ish second cooldown on your mount. I, don't, I forget the exact number. Maybe 25 seconds, but I look at my mount cooldown, two more seconds to go. I could just mount up and chase this guy. He's too far from any of the exits. Pretty easy uh, kill here, and uh, he's he's worth quite a bit. I think this guy was worth like four to 500,000. He had some other people he had kill uh, their loot on them as well. I do end up losing all this loot later, and I'm going to show you why. And it's one of the main reasons I don't PvP in this game is because of hackers and cheaters, which you're going to see later in the video. But for now, just enjoy the PvP kill. And, you know, for me, I don't care if I lose a mill, it's whatever. I, I get that back from referral codes. So, you know, easy kill here. He has no chance. I also upgrade my cape and um, upgrade my mount. So this makes ganking even easier. I get some more potions. Just all in all, free loot. Um, and it's free. So I catch these two guys twiddling their thumbs, not wanting to grab the wisp. I guess they didn't want to fight each other. But this guy... He just sticks around. I don't know why he's sticking around. So I dismount him. Of course I dismount him. And, uh, yeah, chase him down. So remember, just like the previous clip, he has no mount. I will have my mount off cooldown shortly. He's also not bleeding, so that put that does keep me in combat. If he is bleeding, that's why I didn't really stack Qs on him. I drop the wisp. I mount up. Chase the guy down. You know how this happens. Uh, he's pretty much gonna die. I don't remember if this one escapes or not. I, he, I don't remember. I, I'll have to look. It's been a little bit. It's been about, I don't know, 10 minutes uh, since I recorded this clip, so, you know, very forgetful memory, but, uh, you know, he's running for it. I'm wanting to deal as much damage as possible. I don't remember, do I throw the potion? No, I do not throw my potion here. So, yeah, he doesn't make it to the exit and, you know, scoop up some loot. So, here's here's the hacker. This guy is going to use a DDoS or a disconnect or a lag hack on me. And this happens all the time. I hate that it happens all the time. You won't ever see other official content creators talk about it because SBI tells them not to show this kind of stuff that it's in their games. It could hurt sales. It hurts viewership. But this is the truth of the reality. This guy uses a drop hack on me. And watch how weird and wonky this is. Now, I want to mention that my internet connection was completely fine. I was actually watching a stream during this, so I alt-tab. And I think I do a little bit of voiceovers because I didn't mute my mic. But look at his HP. It's, isn't this weird? Like, he's still moving around, he's still attacking me, and he's just not dying, he's not going down. The chat's still moving, by the way. The chat is a separate source. See the chat's still moving? This is 100% a hack. SBI will never refund me my losses, and now it says chat disconnected. It's not. My internet's still fine. And um, what happens is, um, yeah, when, once the lag goes away, that skeleton archer downs me, and because I'm literally next to a weakened wisp, uh, it's just a big bright flag on the map. I figure, you know, might as well try to wait it out, but uh, that doesn't exactly happen. So, lads, that is the video. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Soul Benji. Please leave a like on this video. There's going to be so many haters that are mad that I'm making a actual legitimate PvP tutorial because the the grand elite, the the big streamers, the other content creators, they don't want you to get good. They don't want to ever teach you exactly how to get good. They don't want competition. They want you to go into the black zone, die, lose all your stuff. The guilds want you to go into the black zone as a complete idiot, die, lose your stuff, etc. So please like this video, and I'm just looking at the guy I killed that hacked. And uh, here comes, uh, you know, a person to execute me. Why, why wouldn't they? It's free loot. I had like a million on me. I was going to turn in that wisp. There was a chest in the bottom right corner of the map I could have gotten. But hacks are hacks. Please uh, click the right side of the video. If you don't, you will be hacked and drop hacked just like I did.